work in a, in, a, in a heart team. If you have a patient, Stephanie, you work on a heart team. The money embarrass you. Okay? If you have a patient that you can't heal its heart, what do you have to do? Surgery ain't going to fix it either. What do you have to do? If you have a patient that has a sick heart and it can't, the doctor can't fix it, what's he got to look for? He's got to have a new heart. Thank you. I know you all said that back. I didn't want to embarrass you. They've got to find a new one. Doctors expend all their abilities. They can't heal this heart. This heart can't be fixed. They need to get on the list of getting a transplant. That's what they got to do. Am I right? Am I wrong? Can you revive a heart that can't be fixed? You can't. The same thing goes here, folks. It cannot be fixed. You've got to have a new one. Nicodemus comes to Jesus one night in John chapter 3 and talks to him about the kingdom. He doesn't understand what did Jesus say? He must be born again. Oh, I can't understand that, he said. And so he explains it out. You must be born again. In other words, you have to have a new heart. You've got to get a transplant. You see, the Bible says that he will give us a heart of flesh from that heart of stone. Your law ago, I talked about how hard life makes you, how hard struggles make you, how hard warfare makes you. That's a heart of stone, and it cracks and breaks, and it can't be fixed. But our Lord wants to give us a heart of flesh, that heart that is soft and is moldable. Just like Jeremiah went down to the potter's house. Remember that? Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house and he said, I went to the potter's house and I seen that vessel that he had and that vessel had, that vessel, that vessel had a crack in it. And so what did the potter do? He made that vessel again another time. We must be made again another time. Amen. Amen. Those of you here today who are believers and you're set free and born again, you know you were made again another time. You know that that person that you once were, you are no longer anymore. Amen. And even though that old person wants to come back to life at times, you know that it can't because it was crucified at the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you now have a new heart. You have a new way to live. You have a new desire. And you walk with Him and you talk with Him. Everything's changing your life. Amen. He tells us about ourselves. And those who have came to Him have agreed with Him one thing, that we are sinners. And it's the ones that need to change is us. We need Him. The question I have for you today, will you agree with Yahweh God, the Father? Will you agree with Him that you're the one that needs to be changed? Will you stop right now and think about it? And will you consider it? Will you not Dismiss that burden on your heart and think you're okay on your own. Remember what I said about the way that you thought was good? It seemed right. The same way me and that friend sat on the back of that truck and raised ourselves into hell and weren't for God, I'd surely be here today. There's a way that seems right to a man, and that way leads to death. Let me tell you about another way. Yeshua said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me, he says. And if you want to come to the Father today, if you want to come to Him, you must believe in Him. And there's no big spectacular thing you have to do other than right now, you must humble yourself. You must listen to what the Lord is saying to you. Not only to repent for the kingdom's hand, but to let Him deal with you on a personal level about your sin. You stop blaming mom and dad and how you was raised. You stop, you stop blaming the teachers in the school system. You stop blaming churches. You stop blaming everybody else in the government. You stop blaming everybody else. And you start taking right now for you and listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying about you. And once you do, you consider it. The question is, will you come? Will you obey and will you eat of the good of the land? I'm going to ask you to stand and speak. While they're getting ready, you're like, Shan, some of you are like uh, writing notes down and you're wondering you're wondering what this message has to do with the good fight. 
I thought the good fight of faith was talking about some kind of battle. It is. When you enlist in God's army to strive to enter in the straight gate, there's spiritual warfare that goes on at that point. And that first battle that you encounter is entering into the straight gate. Anybody ever seen that uh, John Bunyan's um, Pilgrim's Progress? I want to say progressive Christian, but that wasn't me. Pilgrim's Progress. You see it? You remember the point where Christian has still got the burden on his back? And he found he got that burden from reading the Word. Okay? You guys understand that? Did you wonder what it meant when he was walking up to that guy's house and the two lions and the statues was growling at him and keeping him from it? Remember what that was? You got, do you remember that point? Watch the movie. If you read the book, those two statues that was on the front of that house, and her, her, he's growling at him. Like, what's that all about? That's what this is. Was Christian going to go past those two lines? Was he going to strive to enter in so he could get on the other side with the cross of that and get his burden lifted? Or was he going to be scared to walk away? So no, I can't go here. It's a bad place. You see, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem natural to us. Okay? But you must strive to enter in. It doesn't seem natural. Sham, I, I'm not that kind of person. I very rarely tell anybody about my problems. I very rarely, I don't ask people for prayer. I, and then beyond that, I, there's no way I'm going to go forward and get to pray. That's too embarrassing. It's too much for me. I can't handle it. It doesn't seem natural to you, does it? But it's a fight worth fighting for. Amen. When you observe, like Nicodemus observed, Yeshua going up the hill, Calvary's hill. When you observe Jesus going up Calvary's hill, bearing that cross, being whipped and bruised and beaten. Laying down that cross, only to be risen up and dying for you. It's worth it all. And walking down an aisle in a church with a bunch of people that already are rooting for you, it's nothing. Okay? I'll never forget the night I gave my life to Jesus. The pastor was telling us about gambling, of all things. He was talking about gambling with your soul. He said, if I was a gamble man, I wouldn't leave this place. He wasn't a gamble man. He said, if I was, I wouldn't leave this place if I didn't know Jesus. And I didn't leave that place. And I didn't care. And I didn't wait for anybody to go for me. I'm like, Pastor Hurt, please be quiet so I can get out of this pew and get up front. And I didn't say that then, but I thought about it now. That's what I was thinking. I can't, I can't wait any longer, Pastor, to shut up and get up. I didn't say that. That's disrespectful. I wouldn't do that. But when I went to that altar, when I got done praying to that altar, I'll never forget. Looking up, and down the altar was my dad over here. And other people, my sisters were there, mom was there. And there was, I can't count everybody was there. Okay? Obviously, Becky was there. We grew with the faith together. That's a given, so that's why I was saying that. And I'll never forget the encouragement that I felt by looking around and seeing all the people that were there not judging me. Not saying it's about time, Shannon. But they were there praying for me. Brother Eugene, Elder Eugene's dad, Carl, was there. His brother, Carol, was there. I just started naming all the people. And I'll never forget that night. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, part of the song I'm going to sing when I get to heaven will be that song. That song there and telling about all the good things God has done for me. Will you find it a battle worth fighting? Will it be worth fighting for? Will you get past the natural man's thinking? Will you get past the worrying of what others think about you? And will you step out by faith? I'm going to tell you what Pastor Herb told me that night. You see, he was talking to me. He didn't know if he was talking to me. If I was a gamble man and I didn't know Jesus, I wouldn't leave this place until I did. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't gamble anymore. But if I was gambling, one thing I wouldn't gamble on is my life outside of Christ. I wouldn't leave this place if I didn't know Jesus. 
do you know Jesus? Do you believe? This goes out to me, God. I have no one person in my mind right now, but the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit does. What you can do.